Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about a very, very important concept in bond valuation, which is called interest rate risk. So here is the main idea. When interest rates change, it changes the rate of return that bondholders can expect to earn on bonds. In other words, it causes a change in the yield to maturity. Very loosely speaking, as interest rates go up, the yield to maturity on bonds or the rate of return that investors can expect to earn on bonds, that goes up as well and vice versa. And so changes in yield to maturity expose bondholders to certain risks. One such risk is called price risk. Price risk merely refers to the risk of changing prices due to changes in interest rates or due to changes in yields. When yield to maturity goes up, the price of the bond goes down. And similarly, whenever the yield to maturity of the bond goes down, the price goes up. There is an inverse relationship between yield to maturity and prices. And so if you're a bond holder, one risk that you face from holding a bond is the changes in prices that can occur as a result of changes in the yield to maturity. And so that is what we refer to as the price risk. And the other risk that you are exposed to is called reinvestment risk. As rates change and as yield to maturity on bond changes, there is a risk that you face in terms of the rate at which you can reinvest your cash flows. And that is what we refer to as reinvestment risk. So let me try and explain how this works. And as we will discover, the price risk of a bond and the reinvestment risk of a bond depends on two main things. One, it's time to maturity. And secondly, the magnitude of its coupon payments, which, as we know, depends on the coupon rate. So let me explain. So consider two bonds, A and B. Both bonds are otherwise identical in the sense that they have the same face value. They have the same coupon rate. In other words, they make the same magnitude of coupon payments. The only difference is that bond A is going to be maturing in one year, whereas bond B is going to be maturing in 30 years. So bond B is a more long-term bond. Bond A is a short-term bond. What I'm showing you here is what the prices of both bonds will look like for different yields to maturity. Specifically, when the yield to maturity is exactly equal to the coupon rate, which is 10%, no surprises that both bonds have the exact same price, which is the face value of the bond, $1,000. Now, if the yields go up all the way to say 15%, both bonds experience a decline in price. But notice, that the decline in the price of bond B is way more, 671, compared to the price of bond A, which is 956. And the same holds in the opposite direction. If the yield to maturity goes down, prices of both bonds will go up, but the price of bond A will go up by a lower magnitude compared to bond B. In other words, bond B is more sensitive to changes in yield to maturity. Intuitively speaking, for short-term bonds, you get a major chunk of the cash flow rather sooner compared to long-term bonds in which you get a major chunk of the cash flows much later. And so when we're doing our discounted valuation, this $1,000 will get discounted at whatever the yield to maturity is, whatever that number is, at the compounded rate of 30, whereas here, it only happens like this $1,000 gets discounted at whatever the yield to maturity is just one year from now, right? And so as you can see, for any number here, compounded 30 times over, it has a much, much bigger impact here at time period zero. And so that is why we say that long-term bonds have more price risk than short-term bonds. In fact, if you understand that logic, then you will also appreciate why low coupon bonds will have more price risk than high coupon bonds. To see this, consider two bonds that are otherwise identical in the sense that they have the same face value, $1,000, and they even have the same time to maturity, which is 30 years. The only difference is, is that one bond pays a coupon of $10 annually, whereas the other makes a coupon payment of $100 annually. Notice that in this case, $1,000 relative to $10 is a much higher value for the first bond 
compared to the second where $1,000 is in relation to $100. In other words, the price of this bond is going to be mostly determined by the $1,000, whereas the price of this bond is not going to be as sensitive to this $1,000, which is 30 years from now. And so that is why we say that low coupon bonds have more price risk than high coupon bonds as well. So now let's talk about what reinvestment risk is and how that is a function of a bond's time to maturity and coupon payments. So consider two bonds, A and B. Both are similar in terms of face value. Both are similar in terms of the coupon rate or the coupon payments that they make. The difference is, is that one bond is short term, is going to mature in one year, and the other one is long term. Now, further assume that you invested in both bonds A and B at time period zero when the yield to maturity on both of these was 10%. Now, let's suppose one year later, the yields on these bonds go down for whatever reason. Maybe the interest rates went down. And so now, one year later, these bonds are yielding something like 5%. Now, here's what's going to happen. When the short-term bond is going to mature, you're going to get your $100 you're going to get your $1,000 back. And now you're like, man, I want to reinvest. But guess what? Bonds of this kind are now only yielding something like 5%. So if you had to reinvest this cash flow in bonds of the same risk, then the rate of return that you can expect to earn is now only 5%. Now compare that to bond B. Here, when you bought bond B, you locked in to a yield to maturity of 10%, meaning that one year later, when you'll receive your $100, you won't have to be as much concerned about the fact that yields and the interest rates have gone down. You will be somewhat concerned. Why? Because, well, you have received $100 and you need to reinvest this. And, well, guess what? The, the best rate that you can get at the same risk is now 5%. But the risk of reinvesting $100 compared to having to reinvest something like $1,100 at a lower 5% is much less. And that is kind of the point. When you're invested in short-term bonds, you're going to be much more exposed to reinvestment risk. You are not exposed to the same magnitude of that risk, that reinvestment risk in long-term bonds. And so that is why we say that short-term bonds have more reinvestment risk than long-term bonds. And if you understand that logic, then you will probably then also appreciate why high coupon bonds will have more reinvestment risk than low coupon bonds. Because if you have a bond that is paying a high coupon, then relatively speaking, you're exposed to more reinvestment risk because now you have a bigger cash flow to reinvest at a yield that could be different from the yield that you invested in the bond in the first place. So in summary, if interest rates or yields go up, you are more exposed to price risk. Why? Because as yields go up, prices go down. You don't like that. And this risk is going to be greater for you if you're holding long-term bonds or if you're holding bonds that have low coupon rates. Additionally, if interest rates or yields go down, then actually you're not as worried about price risk because, well, the prices of your bonds are going to go up. However, you are concerned about reinvestment risk. Because if yields go down and you're going to be getting some cash flows, you have to reinvest it and you wouldn't want to do that at lower yields or lower rates. And so this reinvestment risk tends to be greater for short-term bonds, as we've seen, or bonds that are paying high coupons. So the question then becomes, what should you do to reduce your exposure to price risk and your exposure to reinvestment risk. And in general, the rule of thumb is that you should try to match your investment horizon with the time to maturity of a bond. In other words, if you are a short-term investor, then you should invest in short-term bonds. And if you are a long-term investor, you should invest in long-term bonds. The intuition is rather simple. 
if you are a short-term investor, let's suppose that you are saving for paying for your college tuition in one year, then you don't really care about reinvestment risk because, well, you are not looking to make a reinvestment. You need a specific amount of money in one year. What you want, therefore, is to invest in a short-term bond that in one year is going to give you something that you can then use to make your tuition payment. What you don't want is investing in a long-term bond because if you invest in a long-term bond and if for some reason in one year the yields go up and as a result the prices of your bonds go down, then you may not get the exact amount of money that you needed to make your tuition payment. And so that is why if your investment horizon is short term, you should invest in a short term bond because A, you don't care about the reinvestment risk and B, you don't want a lot of price risk. On the other hand, if you are a long term investor, then you're probably better off investing in a long term bond. So let's suppose that you find a bond that is yielding 10% and it's going to be maturing in 25 years. And let's suppose your investment horizon is 25 years as well, maybe because you're saving for your kids' uh, college education. Then once you have invested in this bond, you're locked into a yield of 10%. And what you don't really care about is the price risk. In other words, you don't really care about how the price of this bond changes over the next 25 years because yields are going up and down and therefore prices are going up and down. You don't care about that price risk because you're in it for the long run. And by having invested in a long-term bond now, you have also reduced your reinvestment risk because you don't have to worry about having to reinvest a lot of the cash flow from your bond at a potentially lower yield to maturity. If you had invested in a short-term bond, however, you would have been exposed to a lot of reinvestment risk because you'd be getting a lot of your cash flows and then you'd be worried about the rate of return that you had to reinvest that money at. So that is why we say that one should match the investment horizon with time to maturity. Now, as it turns out, technically speaking, this statement is not exactly correct. There's a concept in bond valuation which is called duration, the duration of a bond. And technically, this should say something like one should match the investment horizon with the duration of a bond. To which you might say, well, what is duration? Well, that is for a separate video. And turns out that the whole concept of duration is motivated by these notions of price risk and reinvestment risk. And that was the objective of this video to help you understand that there is something called interest rate risk that you face when you invest in bonds. Interest rate risk comprises of price risk and reinvestment risk. And both of these in turn depend on two main things, the time to maturity of a bond and the coupon payments that a bond makes.